Oh, hi there. It's Anne here uh, on the Life LDC channel, and I'm here today to talk to you about Rowan magazine number 68. 68 means 34 years of uh, consistently producing two major design collections a year. Um, they always come in hardcover magazines. They're never available digitally. Well, they are sort of available. They're now available digitally, and I'll talk to you about that at the end. So um, what I want to do now is I'm going to go top down. I'm going to go through the book. I'm going to point out anything that I find of interest, maybe something that you uh, you wouldn't notice just at a quick glance at the photographs. And um, I have a couple of, I try to keep my own personal opinions about the designs out of it but sometimes my thoughts pop in here and there. So I'm going to do that first, and then at the end, we'll just talk about, um, uh, about how you can get these designs. I really want to say thank you very much for watching my videos. I appreciate all my subscribers and I've noticed my statistics, statistically uh, more subscribers are watching than non-subscribers. But so all you non-subscribers, please subscribe, hit the, uh, hit the subscribe below and hit the notification button to be alerted when I produce another video. Thanks again. So let's get right on to magazine, Rowan Magazine 68. So here we go. This is a, a review of the designs in Rowan Magazine number 68. Love the cover. The very interesting shawl there. You'll see that uh, later. 39 designs and there's uh, Rowan's gone back to three stories for this magazine. I like the three stories idea. It just gives you uh, a great overview of yarns and options to knit. So as usual, contents, list of features, little preview, list of designers, some new designers here. Kristen Tendike, Kathy Karen, and Amy Gunderson. I looked them up on Ravelry and they're there as designers but this i believe is the first time they've appeared here on rowan in the rowan magazine so the first story is seamless um, it's not in the round necessarily but it is seamless some top down and, and in the round designs with uh, the way it's being shaped that there are no seams seams are not necessary so quite an interesting selection of garments here the first one is called Five E. Five E by Lisa Richardson in um, Felta Tweed Aran. This is a, a combination of two loops that go over each shoulder. It's done in Fair Isle. I'm thinking you could, you know, size this down and make a really nice cowl. I've seen this um, approach before by Lisa. I think back in magazine 46, she did uh, a design called Wayfair. I'll look that up for you. Abbotsford is a top down uh, design. It has raglan shaping, the body. So you start at the uh, neckline and you create the yoke and you're knitting back and forth you're not knitting in the round, but you're knitting back and forth, incorporating uh, the sleeves as you knit down. This is knit in Alpaca Classic, designed by Wiebe Ulrich, and you hold two strands of Alpaca Classic together. So it's uh, it's uh, 12 stitches and 18 rows, so a little bit of a, a chunkier knit, so that would knit up rather quickly. Kerr Laverach. That sounds Welsh to me. Then an alpaca classic by Lisa Richardson. This long coat really called out to me. 
I'm a, I'm a sucker for a long coat. It's uh, so the seamless concept here is that the back is knit uh, straight up and then you knit the um, front pieces out from the sides of the back and you incorporate the sleeves in there. This is knit again in Alpaca Classic and you use two strands held together and make this saw. Uh, and uh, You're always using the same color held together to make this striped effect. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Dunrobin is in felted tweed. It's by... Kristen Tendike, and this is a uh, top down. You work from the top of the saddle shoulder and uh, you work down the sleeve and down the body. Uh, it has ever so slight body shaping and this is a rather slim fit, um, you know, compared to what's been happening these days, you know, everything's sort of big and oversized. This is a nice slim fit. Most of these designs are in the typical Rowan sizing, 32, 34, up to 48, 50. So felted tweed, and it takes from six to eight balls of felted tweed to do this design. Colzian by Lisa Richardson. Uh, this is an interesting construction. You um, knit the front and the back straight up as one piece. And then again, you pick up on the sides to knit out and that's where the, uh, the belt loop holes are created. And then the sleeves are also added that way. It's done in Alpaca Classic. Stocking stitch. I think that looks really cozy. It would be really a nice light, but yet cozy, uh, warm layering piece. And I'm I like that uh, that cowl neck. Thurl stain by Georgia Farrell. This is um, worked in one piece top down to the armholes. So you create the, the, shoulder, the, so, the shoulder shaping the net and set up the raglan uh, sleeves. And then you work top down to the armholes where it's split for the sleeves and the body. The, the pattern, uh, the feature pattern around the bottom is charted out and it has bobbles. Bobbles are still in it seems. Next comes the, um, the cover shawl. It's called Kinross, done in Alpaca Classic by Georgia Farrell. I had to really read the pattern on this to figure out how it worked. And um, no, there's no other pictures. I'm going to look for another picture of this. You knit from the small end, increasing up in big blocks of color. And then you pick up down one side and add these striped, stripes of color on. I think it looks really interesting. Uh, done in Alpaca Classic, it's beautiful. I think it would be great done in felted tweed or any other uh, beautiful Rowan yarn. Kid Silk Haze would be spectacular. Just my opinion. Cawdor. In felt to tweed, Aaron by Martin Story. Martin does a lot of ponchos, and this one is gorgeous. It's knit in one piece, and it's knit from side to side. The cables are charted, and it is in felt to tweed, Aaron. That would be a gorgeous fall cover-up, don't you think? I'm probably butchering these names. Bon, bon La, bon Loy, Felt to Tweed Aaron by Martin Story again. This is a small cape, uh, an elbow length cape. It's knit in the round and the cables are charted. Manderston by Arnon Carlos. Knit in Felt to Tweed, two colors of Felt to Tweed. It, um, 
the pattern in this is charted and you start from the bottom up. So you knit the body and you knit the sleeves. You join at the underarms to create the, the uh, yoke area, which is done with raglan shaping and a, and a deep rib neckline. Kelly is in Alpaca Classic by Kristen Tendike. This is what's all the rage right now. It's a yoke design. It's top down. It's charted. Uses four colors of Alpaca Classic. It's absolutely gorgeous. It would be so light. Um, and, I, and I love that color combination there. Kincardin by Galena Carroll. It's in felted tweed. It's mainly one shade of felted tweed. You use a tiny little bit of two shades at the top and on the bottom rib edges. And then there's this embroidery on the neckline. Um, this is a current uh, shape. You see this in a lot of uh, sweaters right now. Knit top down, splits for the arms and the, and the arm uh, depth, the armhole depth is quite deep. It's, it's almost like a poncho, a little mini poncho with sleeves. Well, maybe not sleeves, armholes. So like a mini poncho with armholes. Dumb Freeze by Emma Wright in Alpaca Classic. This is so 70s, I really like this. The body is knit in one piece to the armholes. There's a cable up the front edge of it that is charted. And then the, um, the, the uh, ferrule design is also charted. But uh, look and look and look, I looked and looked, couldn't find any instructions for the uh, fringe. So I'm going to ask Rowan about that. Skibo by Martin uh, Story is a longer poncho. It is a cable, uh, cable pattern is charted and it looks like it's a moss stitch on the rest of it. The cable is on both the front and the back. They don't show you the, uh, the back, but it's on both the front and the back. And the little um, arm warmers are called Falkland. They're done in Alpaca Classic, five different colors. Um, there's no thumb, it's strictly knit in the round. It, they are arm warmers, you just slide your hand in. I love to wear them over top of my leather gloves. They really keep your hands and wrists warm. The next design is this little uh, cowl. It's called Hope Tune by Kathy Karen. It's knit in felted tweed and it's just a delicate cable, lacy cable pattern on, uh, takes two uh, balls of felted tweed. A nice little pattern that would be a great gift for the upcoming Christmas season. This next design is called Hamilton. It's by Vibe Ulrich. I am intrigued by this. You start at the neckline and you knit down. It's knit in alpaca classic and felted tweed held together. I'm dying to swatch for this. Um, you don't really see the neckline very clearly here. I'm looking for another, another picture that has the, uh, the neckline. So you start in the neckline, you go to the underarm and then you split. And again, this has the interesting um, feature of these patterning stripes, patterning, uh, patterning seams coming from the underarm into the front. You'll see it on the back here, they disappear and go to the front. The next one is called Meller Stain by Amy Gunderson. It is in Alpaca Classic. Alpaca Classic is great for feral designs. It's so nice and light. It's knit from the bottom up. So you knit the, the body and the sleeves and you join at the underarm to um, create the, the top quote yoke, but it has does have raglan shaping.
This design is called Galbraith. It is deceptive at first. Um, I thought, ooh, you know, big clunky, it's felted tweed air. And I thought, who, why would you want a felted tweed air and pull over? It is another version of a poncho. It has the stand up neck. You knit it um, from the front hem up and over the shoulders down to the back. Then you pick up for these armhole uh, ribs. You seam the bottom of the armhole rib and the side seams below that are left open. So it's very swingy and you could pop it over um, whatever you're wearing if you wore it as a, as a layering piece over even to on top of a jacket. So I, uh, the more I looked at that, the more I realized it was a very uh, useful item. The last garment in the seamless section is called Tameth by Lisa Richardson also. It is in felted tweed. It's um, a skirt done in a rib pattern. It's knit bottom up in the round. Very simple knit. You end up making a, a welt at the top for a large piece of uh, elastic to go through and hold that uh, uh, waistband in place. Knitted skirts. Have you, know, have you worn a knitted skirt before? I haven't. I don't think I'm gonna start now, but anyway, that's the last piece from the seamless uh, section of Rowan 68. Just wanted to say that um, one of the things I love about the Rowan magazines is where the photo shoots are done. And this is, uh, this section story was uh, filmed at Ruthen Castle. Haven't looked that up yet. I will look it up and if I find a link, I will link it in the uh, in my notes below. The Rowan magazine always uh, has a feature about something that's outside of the magazine. And in this case, uh, this is an article on D Hardwick's seasonal palettes. D is going to have three uh, collections, uh, design collections this season. They are all separate to the magazine, but this is an article um, that talks about her approach to design and her colorful approach to design. As you can see, she loves color. So the second story is called City Tweed. The, this is a collection of eight designs by Martin Story. They're all in uh, felted tweed, I believe, yes. And they are a relaxed collection. So, um, so something that you could just, you know, the kind of sweater that you would just put on your go-to sweater. You know, pick it in your, knit one in your favorite color uh, there's something here for everybody. Savoy is uh, in felted tweed. It is a one size pattern. It's a textured pattern folded poncho, that real traditional folded poncho styling. You can just knit, knit, knit a huge rectangle and sew it up to create the poncho. Easy to wear, easy to knit, easy to wear, fabulous. Shaftesbury. It's a bottom up, uh, knit bottom up and it's seamed. The front button band is knit uh, as you knit the front pieces. Then there is, is an extension of the button band that goes, goes up and around the neck and it gets sewn onto the back of the, uh, the neckline piece. I like that. I don't like having to uh, sew button bands on after. Odeon is the, the scarf. Very fine knit cable, twisty cable scarf. Absolutely gorgeous, shown here with the Adelphi uh, pullover, V-neck pullover. I love this combination. This is really high up on my, maybe I need to knit this this season. Um, I love that the, um, the body of this it's minimal at the, the bottom. It starts with the garter stitch edge. You knit up and 
the body goes out and creates little um, shoulder extensions, like little sleeve extensions. So it goes up and out to create this sleeve. And then the sleeves are knit up and sewn, um, sewn into the body. When the side seams are sewn up, there's a slit and you can see that there. I didn't notice that at first. I love the idea of the slit. I love the, the um, really minimal look of this and I really love it together with the Odeon scarf. Just what color to make it in, right? Always the big decision. And I say that uh, because I know it's already out in the world, so I'm just going to mention it now. There are 12 more colors of felted tweed coming this season. They'll be out in October because there's a book coming by CAFE to celebrate those 12 colors. Just keep your eyes open for that. Um, I've seen a preview of them. They're absolutely gorgeous. Just a picture, but they're, they're beautiful, including black. Like, we've been waiting for black felted tweed for how long, right? Okay, back to the story, landscape. This is knit in pieces. Uh, there's a texture, this, this is more of a boxy shaped body and a very general slope, V-neck slope. It's knit bottom up. The, uh, the body's textured, as I said, with rib on the bottom and the, the, the uh, button band is also knit. Oh no, in this one, in this case, the button band is knit separately and sewn on. Now, I would be tempted to use the technique of the other one and knit the body band at the same time. Just me. Haymarket by Martin Story also. This whole story, <laughs> oh, I can't say that. This whole story is knit by Martin Story. No, no, no. Haymarket. This design is bottom up, knit in pieces, sleeves are knit up and sewn in. It, uh, the body and sleeves have a textured uh, design on them. I think that would be great. Love the color of that. It's shown here in alabaster. Abby is a really classic round neck uh, cardigan. The It's knit in pieces. It's another one of these where the front rib is knit on as you knit the front pieces. So but going back to this one, I don't see why you can't do it for this one too. Um, the body is stocking stitch. So the bottom rib and the front band all the ribs on this is are twisted ribs. That just gives it a little touch of, of uh, elegance with that twisted rib. And the last design in this story is called Palladium. It's shown here in Bilberry. Also knit in pieces, the, the body is done in stocking stitch and the uh, sleeves are set in sleeves. This is a longer version of that classic uh, sweater. The front bands are knit in conjunction with the, the front pieces on this. So again, not sure why they didn't do that with this because these look actually very similar sort of in, in styling. So I say knit the front bands at the same time as you go up. What do you think? I think these are spectacular um, additions to your wardrobe. They are the kind of sweater that you reach to all the time. They can be dressed up, they can be dressed down. And this whole story was uh, photographed in Bath in the UK. The second feature in this magazine is called Homeware and it uh, is on Erica Knight. Erica Knight used to design for Rowan. She's gone off on her own. Now she's back to do a Homeware collection for Rowan. And uh, when you read this, the thing that jumped out at me, uh, she really, really loves the fact that things are hand knit. 
and she she wants you to celebrate the fact that they're hand knit not to to worry about making everything look absolutely perfect so what one of the things she might do is to leave either a bit of the cast on or the cast off thread hanging and it just shows that it's handmade i think that's too cute i'm not sure i could do it but i do think it's gorgeous so good article love the love the whole styling in this i love i love navy blue the first item is called Salt Wave, and this is an absolutely gorgeous um, throw. It's done in a herringbone slip stitch pattern and uses creative linen. You need 10 balls of creative linen. It's shown here in silver, and I just love the way it was styled sort of as a skirt with a belt. Creative Linen's my new favorite yarn, remember? This is gorgeous, called Marum. It also uses Creative Linen combined with brushed fleece. And it's a, a ferrule technique, a ferrule knit. And then there's a, a large um, fringe of brushed fleece added to the edge. And here you can see this is the right side. And there you can see the wrong side. It shows you the stranding. I really like this. Then comes Driftwood. This is this cushion down here. It uses um, four different shades of creative linen. But of course, you could use as many or as few as you want. It uh, uh, can either be done with um, a zipped back or just a plain back. And this is just, uh, there's not really a pattern. It does give you um, how many stitches to cast on, but it does not tell you each and every stripe. It's you doing your own thing with random striping. So just beware of that if you're one of these people that has to have um, the exact directions, okay? Pause is by Erica Knight. And this is the idea of, I guess, being really comfortable at home. You want your, a big squishy sweater to wear. And this is done in Rowan Big Wool held double. It's knit in pieces from the bottom up. Um, then you sew the raglan sleeves, the seat, uh, sleeves onto the body, and then you knit the neckband. This would be knit up in double quick time. And uh, it takes from 12 to 17 balls for the five different sizes in Big Bowl. It's sh shown here in Mallard. Botanical is this round cushion. It's done in creative linen and you um, knit two pieces and then you sew them together around the outside with a, a, you can use a cushion pad. It's a 27 and a half inch circular cushion pad or stuffing if you prefer stuffing. And then they've used two buttons to uh, hold the sides together and give it that indentation. Also in creative linen. Fiction, love this. It's uh, designed in five, then the five sizes. It's using brushed fleece, and it is shown here in the Cairn colorway. It's, um, you start with the two back, let me see, yes. You start with the two back pieces separate, and then you join them together to continue and uh, knit up. And then the front pieces are knit, the shoulder seams are put together with the seam actually on the outside. And then the sleeves are knit and attached and there are also pockets. This would be a great uh, snuggly winter sweater, don't you think? The next design is called, oh, no it isn't. This is another version of that Marin, Marum, the uh, creative linen and brushed fleece 
um, throw. Love the color combination here also. I just like look at green wellies, a green velvet dress, and she's got this throw over her. Love this. Look at the colors in the in the painting behind her. She's just saying, ha ha ha, don't you wish you were me? <laughs> I think so. Bracken. This is done mostly in felted tweed. One, two, three, four shades of felted tweed, ginger, phantom, ancient, and clay. And then alpaca classic in Sierra, Melange, and Willow. This would be gorgeous. It's just a striped rib shawl, shawl or humongous scarf. Reverse is done in creative linen. It is three different shades of created linen. You create four panels and then you're all um, sewn together at the end. Now, I just want to point out here, looking at the pattern, Erica suggests a cable cast on. It, Of course, you can use any cast on that you want, but it's extremely rare for Rowan to ever designate a cast on. So if I was going to do this, even if cable cast on wasn't my favorite, I would do cable cast on just because Erica suggested it. Drowsy. I love these. Felt to tweed, Aaron, and creative linen. If you read the article um, on Erica Knight, she suggests, you know, you can double up yarns and, and substitute yarns, double it up to get to the right uh weight or to change the size of these because it come, they're only designed in one size and then use little bits and bobs of favorite things suede or embroidery thread to just to uh, embellish them I think they're so cute and I think I'm gonna have to try making one of those if they don't fit oh well I'll just enjoy the experience this sweater by Erica Knight is called Afternoon and I think it's the kind of thing it's done in Alpaca Classic. It's you know it's a cold wintry afternoon. You're sitting around you're gonna read or maybe you're gonna watch TV or maybe even you're gonna knit and it's that, got that really deep um, v-neck. The back pieces wrap around to the front you know, the way that that's that's all the rage right now. And these sleeves are extremely wide and straight, and then they're gathered into this, this deep cuff. And last but not least, sea kale. It's a big wool blanket. You use the yarn double. You can knit it in a plain version, or you can you can marl it a little bit and use um, four different colors the way it's done here. Smoky, blue velvet, mallard, and ice blue big wool. Takes 19 skeins in the plain version and 22 skeins if you're going to knit the, uh, the striped version. Absolutely gorgeous. In the back of the magazine always gives you the listing of all the new publications for this season. And there's some coming out in October. You really shouldn't see them, but those those are the 3D Hardwick. And then there's the CAFE one I already mentioned. And there's some mode at Rowan's. They should be out already. And then there's some, some new yarns coming up. I'm going to cover those up for sure. And it goes from here into the patterns. And I just want to point out the thing that I love about the Rowan magazine is the back page is this gallery. So after you've looked at all the patterns, the, uh, it, you know, the lookbook part of the beginning, the patterns are not in the order of the way they're in the book. And so you have to sort of, you might have to look all around. It's really easy just to look at this and go, oh, there's that, oh, 
pattern, page 105. I love that about the Rowan magazine. I just want to point out that the Rowan magazine is printed on paper uh, that's produced from responsible sources. It's a certified um, forest and other controlled sources. And I also just want to give you a look at when your subscriber copy comes. This is my subscriber copy. It comes in this plastic bag that is compostable in um, a cardboard wrapping that is recyclable. So Rowan are doing their best to uh, take care of the earth for us. And when you're talking about a big um, printed magazine like this, I think that's really important. And I just would like to say thank you to Rowan for, for doing that for us. So that's it. What will I knit out of Rowan 68? What will you knit out of Rowan 68? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed my overview of the uh, patterns in Magazine 68. I, uh, I'm hoping that uh, by giving you a few details maybe that aren't obvious just from the photographs that you'll look at uh, some of the designs that maybe you had discounted at first glance. I have to say that a lot of these really um, grew on me and also taking into um, into consideration my Stash Happy 2020 program, I have picked out quite a few designs that I'd like to attempt this season. I've got one right here, it's, it's almost done. I'm knitting like a mad person. And uh, what I want to do on my next video is share with you my, um, my, my approach to looking at the designs and how they fit me, how they fit my body. I am not a skinny mini like the models in this book. I have to say this model in particular is really, really slim. And um, it's hard to imagine sometimes designs that are on a very, very slim person and put them, project them onto yourself with all your lumps and your bumps and you know and I, I've, said, I've told you before I'm a Canadian size 16 which I think is like a 20 in the UK I'm, I'm 5 foot 10 I'm a tall person yes I could lose to use a few you know but I, I um, anyway I like my knits and I have learned over the years how to approach a knit to make it uh, suit me so Actually, I will be doing a video on that shortly to, uh, to talk about the designs that I'm contemplating and how I decided, uh, how I actually chose them for my, my personal aesthetic. The Rowan magazine is available, as I mentioned, in hard copy, it has been in hard copy forever. And these patterns are not released um, in digital copy singly. It's always been a, mag a hard copy magazine. Well, a couple of years ago, Rowan uh, created um, an app and it's, it's the Rowan magazine app. It is, it was, um, it's part of the, the Zhu, J, J, O, O, M, A, G uh, umbrella. And so if you go on to Apple or to your Google Downloads app downloads, you can download the Rowan app and purchase digital copies, a digital, I don't know if you can see this, probably not. No, I shall, what I'll do is I will do, uh, do it on my screen. So there's the Rowan app. You click on that, it takes you to the newsstand and shows you the all the issues that are available. So they're Magazine 68, 67, and you'll see the newsletters are also available via the app, 66, 65, and 64 was the first uh, magazine offered digitally. 
I ended up purchasing 65. I wanted to see what it was like to uh, purchase a digital magazine. So I did that, you click on it, there's my library, you click on 65 and it downloads it. It opens up and you can see on the bottom left there is a, a page uh, preview icon and you click on that and all the pages come up. Then you actually can act, click on a page and go directly to that page. So I'm just going to close that and yes you can see that on the newsstand you can now purchase your Rowan magazines digitally via the Rowan app. So you will be able to Nowadays, you can purchase a digital copy of the magazine, but it's not in combination. You don't buy the hard copy and get the digital also. They're exactly the same. They cost, as far as I can tell, exactly the same. If you like a hard copy, you can buy the hard copy. If you like digital, you can buy a digital copy and digital copy will be available on your device. So. If you like hard copy, you can either support your local yarn store and get your hard copy direct from them. And even if your local yarn store isn't so local, all the yarn stores are mailing out these days, always, you know, so you can get it that way. Or you can subscribe. Now in the past, subscribers received with their uh, hard copy, a newsletter, a hard copy newsletter. That has now been changed to a digital newsletter and with the winter edition which is always the uh, even numbered edition so 68 there were there's a, the cut subscribers are given a subscriber collection of patterns again this time that arrived digitally because of covid and everything being backed up and printing being delayed and deliveries of everything the actually i actually received the newsletter and the subscriber collection of patterns before I received my magazine. The shops actually had my had the magazine before I received my copy of the mag my subscriber copy of the magazine. I don't mind. Yes, I really wish it came early in the in a f quite a few years ago it used to come about 3 weeks before the the stores had it. So you always felt so, you know, privileged because as a subscriber you got a good look at the designs and you were ready to jump in there and, and buy right away buy your yarn right away so anyway it's up to you it's what you like i love getting things in the mail i love walking out to the mailbox and seeing that subscriber package sitting in my mailbox so i have a special extra large mailbox at the end of the driveway just so that my subscriber copy can fit in there so whatever makes you happy. If you're into digital and you want a digital copy, you can now get a digital copy. Or never fails. Motorcycles always go by when they're trying to when I'm trying to record. So if you like digital copy, you now can get a digital copy. Or if you're like me and maybe you've been collecting for a few years and you have a shelf full of Rowan magazines and you really like to have your hard copy up there you can still get a hard copy. So again, thank you for watching. And until next time, when I will talk about uh, my top, maybe my top five designs here, and I'll talk about why I picked them uh, and, and how I look at them from my point of view. Okay, so until next time, happy knitting. Thank you.